The first parent-teacher community forum of 2014 took on one of the biggest issues facing students, their families, and the educators who serve them. More than 200 teachers, school support personnel, administrators, elected officials, advocates, and students turned out to learn more about new national teaching standards and how they will impact our classrooms. The purpose of the event was to bring experts, state education department officials, educators, parents, and students together to better understand how the Common Core state standards are being implemented in Connecticut schools. The forum was organized by the unions representing Connecticut's teachers, school support staff, and administrators in order to facilitate meaningful discussion, encourage critical debate, and raise and hopefully answer important questions. I did come here because, as June said before, um, we have to bridge that gap between the parents. We also have to learn to educate our parents as well. Not all, I do find often that teachers may not have that opportunity that we have as parent and family li liaisons to even um, spend that time with the families and show the families that, you know, hey, we're all on the same page. We're here just to better educate your child and to make your child successful for the future. So that's why I am here. Well, I really wasn't sure. I've already looked at Smarter Balance and uh, the Common Core, and we've had a lot of PDs on it. But I was interested to hear, actually, the crowd as much as I've heard the speakers. So uh, I got what I was looking for, I think. When we as educators stop to realize that we have to keep our bar high and expect the children to rise to that bar instead of bringing our bars low to better meet the needs of the children that we're working at. I believe that that's where we fall short because we're always saying that children are resilient, but we're expecting them to rise to that resilient, but we're lowering that resiliency level. So I believe that that's, you know, um, where we fall short. And that's what makes me kind of nervous. Uh, the, the crowd didn't make me anxious. Actually, there wasn't as much complaining as I thought there would be. But um, it was interesting to hear the emotion and, and what was going on. So I, I think, as I told my wife, uh, good art makes a lot of people talk about stuff. So I think Sharon was right that says, we're talking about this stuff now. So even with all that emotion, I think the conversation has started uh, very strongly and uh, good has to come from that. Sandra Alberti is the Director uh, of State and District Partnerships and Professional Development for Student Achievement Partners. Sandra joined Student Achievement Partners in the New Jersey Department of Education, where she served as the Director of Academic Standards and as the Director of Math and Science Education. In these roles, Sandra was directly involved in state standards, assessment, and professional development policy and implementation strategies. Prior to working at that state level, Sandra had several district level positions, including school superintendent. And I hear they get a little picky about how many seats there are in the auditorium. Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, Principal, Subject Area Supervisor, and what I like best, High School Science Teacher. That's what I did. She holds a Bachelor Degree in Biology from Rutgers University and a Master's and a Doctorate's Degree in Educational Leadership from Rowan University. Student Achievement Partners was founded by David Coleman, Susan Pimentel, and Jason Zimba. Lead writers of the Common Core State Standards and the organization is a nonprofit organization with one purpose, to help all students and teachers see their hard work lead to greater student achievement. So please welcome Sandra Alberti. So one of the things that we think is very helpful in understanding the standards is to start off with these kind of big picture messages, this big picture change of what's different about these standards. And we have really worked on how to talk about this, how to get people to understand the standards through this framework of talking about three big shifts are happening in literacy instruction and three big shifts are happening in mathematics. And there is more to the standards than this, but if you understand these things, you're gonna have a great preview into what your children's education will look like, into what Smarter Balance assessments are gonna start looking like because it is part of uh, one in the same. So this I kind of talk about as understanding the forest from the trees. And so understanding this isn't everything, but it gets you a lot. Because the implementation is a big problem. And we, I don't understand why this is such a rush. Why we haven't piloted this? Why we don't <laughs> see whether this works? Why are the kids in classrooms and, and, and children being used as guinea pigs to find out That's in 11th right. grade. It's going to work. 
um, I'll just say my, my position on this. Um, one is, I think we should use kids' strengths. All of that is instruction. Standards as outcome expectations, kind of by definition, can't be field tested. What you do field test is implementation and implementation strategies. And as far as rushing, you know, Connecticut adopted these standards over three years ago. And so the fact that right now people are feeling the stress and the weight of full implementation is true, but these have been on the books in Connecticut for over three years. And so, you know, would five years be, what's that? Well, 11 for, the thing, for a student to be fully formed, but that's not 11 years from now, let's pull the switch and everybody's doing Common Core. 11 years means we're now in year four, approaching year four of an 11 year plan if you wanna think about it that way. Um, but I, none of this is supposed to be disrespectful to, to the work that you all do. And just the last point I'll make, in it, 30 kids in a kindergarten class full of high need students never was and never will be an ideal situation under any circumstances. And let's not blame the standards for that. As far as this, the country finding a standard to measure everyone, you're, you're giving computers to kids who have them and kids that don't. You're taking a scientific situation and changing too many variables. And what it's going to do is come up with, with grades and scores that is going to make teachers look horrible and affect my evaluation <coughs> as a educator. And I think there's just too much change in too many directions at the same time. Yeah, and I can appreciate every one of those sentiments. Uh, I will say not part of the standards, but certainly part of the whole initiative. And, and, I'm, and I know a lot of people are really thinking about this closely. Um, there's a lot of conversations that are happening in many, many places every single day about, you know, the assessments next to the uh, standards, the evaluation of teachers next to the standards, and I think in the next few months, you know, to come, you'll start seeing some of this actually impacting and developing. I don't have that authority or that position, but I recognize and acknowledge uh, a lot of the points that you make and appreciate very much the involvement that, that you've had in all of this work from the testing uh, to the standards and, and meeting the needs of even, even your own children. So um, it's hard. I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, don't worry, everything will get taken care of. It is a messy situation. Uh, I think there are many people in this country from the classroom to the White House who uh, see this as a real moment in time and an opportunity and what we not don't do so well all the time is we what well, this train is let's add this to the train let's add this to the train let's add this to the train and i get the idea that we need to keep doing this the one thing that i will in a very naive way tell you is all of this is based on quality implementation it's about good teaching and good learning and if we all kind of hopefully keep trying to focus on that and let all the rest of this noise kind of like uh, it, it's it's pretty tough to say but if you're doing the you know the job of good teaching and good learning this is about aligning a very messy system that we've had for so long into kind of one stream there's a lot of transitions there but if I were you know giving any advice to teachers right now it's focus on what's most important for kids with teaching and learning and that's what this is at its heart. The implementation is messy, in many cases lousy, um, but it's all to get us to a place where we have better teaching and better learning. I don't know that anybody has any other motivation in this uh, other than that. Well, I was hoping today that we'd have more parent voice heard and more student voice heard. Also, uh, special ed um, concerns were not really addressed that well. Um, I think it's important that all parents in Connecticut who have school children take this practice test and get an idea of what rigor and what is being asked of the children. Um, I'm concerned about the amount of time that's going to be spent on um, test prep and computer um, training that's going to be needed. Um, also the inequity between children who don't have regular use of a computer um, students who've never used an iPad with an extended keyboard or a um, uh, laptop without a mouse. Um, there's so many technology um, elements in this um, that I think that any scientist wouldn't change multiple variables. If you want to test something, you change one variable. So with the Common Core, I think it's great curriculum, and I'm enjoying teaching my kids. But to judge my children on a computer-based test and to judge my effectiveness as a teacher, I think is, is too many changes at once. 
and it's raised level of anxiety among teachers. Um, I think it's not a really good time to be a teacher in the United States. Okay, I am, I'm the dad, okay? I'm the volunteer. Um, so the one thing that, the one main thing that I have told parents is don't look at the standards. You look at the standards, they're in what I call, I, I affectionately call edu-speak. I don't understand them. You guys got the curriculum degrees, the students over there are working in, in college and they know the, the speak. I don't know the speak. I've looked at the, I've looked at the standards and my eyes blaze over. And I, I'm just like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, a rubric. And <laughs> just learn basically what your child is supposed to get to. And we have, we and great public schools have, have uh, greater schools have um, an outstanding piece that they can read to know. They're out in the, in the lobby, with, they're called Parents Guides to Student Success, and a parent can take those and know at the beginning of second grade, read that, it's on front and back page, says English language arts on one side, math on the other, and says this is what your child should generally know by the end of the, by the end of second grade, be, be prepared to go to third grade. When I was in, in high school going to college, CAP tests, SATs, were just a means to my future. That's how I saw them. I studied for those tests. And then I wasn't studying them necessarily for the material, which is what I've heard in, in, in some remarks to uh, standardized testing. So for me, tests weren't a big part of getting to my college career. They were just the means to my career, or getting to my college career. But um, but I do have to say that tests served as that foundation because when I went to school, I went to college classes where I was expected to take tests and study for them. And without that framework and foundation that's set forth in high school, I would not have been prepared. So I have to say that studying or tests played two roles. One, getting to my future, and two, preparing me for what would come in my future. So I don't discredit having to take those standardized tests and having to take tests in my high school classes. Um, I, I do believe they're both necessary for getting to your future. When students are taking more tests, they have reduced instructional times. And I think that was the point that you were trying to, to make earlier. And with regard to the formatives, I mean, <clears throat> my understanding of a formative assessment um, is very broad in the sense that uh, when I'm working with students in a small group and I notice uncomfortable body language, I can assess that moment that that's, that group, that student is not, I, I'm taking some formative data. Are, these, are my taxpayer dollars going to be and should be spent on something like this? Versus I'd rather pay for more teachers, um, more paraprofessionals, more social workers, uh, more guidance counselors in our school. Uh, in New Britain High School, we have a school of 3,000 kids. The ratio of guidance counselor to student will make you cry. It's 285 students to one guidance counselor. Why bother having any guidance counselors if that's the case? And what are we saying about our kids? We don't care enough to give them those resources that they need. Common Core is not going to solve that. The forum also featured a discussion of the new Smarter Balance assessment tests that are connected to the Common Core state standards and included labs for participants to take practice tests. I have a fear of the teachers being out of the classroom doing the assessments. They're out more than they've ever been out before and we have subs just coming in to fill the blocks of time. So there's no academics being taught during those periods, just a follow through. There are many issues related to the implementation of Common Core and the student tests and teacher evaluations based on these new standards in schools across our state. This forum was the second in a series seeking to build stronger partnerships between teachers, parents, and their communities. Be sure to turn out your school community for the next forum, which takes place Tuesday, May 6th in East Hartford, and will focus on how community organizing can build power and help reclaim the promise of a great public education for all our children. It's my job to take on the information and being able to pass it on to them. And as you've seen, many teachers had um, questions about what is really the common core, what is the, um, the smarter, smarter balance assessment. Um, by me coming here, and I guarantee you, I know parents will have the same question as well and have the same confusion, so, and I'm able to translate that back to them.